Hug me. Ah, uh, worst sound ever. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, haha, he has a hug me on his forehead. Okay, well, you guys can watch this on your own time. <laughs> uh, you can pause the video and, and type these in. We have, we're wasting time. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> this is, okay. What's significant here? See, I actually, uh, suso.com is my web hosting provider. And I actually bought suso.co when the CO domains came out. And I tied, I just made a sim link from the suso.co domain to the suso.com domain. So any record I set up in suso.com is also available in suso.co. Probably just violate some security issues by telling you that, but oh well, I trust you guys. Um, so this person actually forgot to type in the M <laughs> and ended up going to suso.co, aquarium.suso.co colon 4000. So that's interesting. I got to see one of those happen in real time kind of thing. Uh, oh, goat sea guy in ASCII art. Hello, CLI magic. Hello. So, yeah, somebody had to do it. They had to post the goat sea guy. <laughs> all right. That's all the text. Let's uh, see what kind of images. I'm scared to open this. Uh, so I like to use a program called... Uh, I call it GQ view because that's the way it used to be called. It's now called GQ or whatever. Uh, it's a nice GUI picture viewer. I mean, I use GUI programs too, uh, but I've been using this for like a decade, and it's I think it's great because uh, it has lots of different options. And one of them is disable file filtering so that I can go in and just see the files like this. So. For each of the ones, haha, <laughs> troll face guy. Uh, for each of the ones that is just ASCII, it's just going to display it, uh, you know, as a broken image. Well, that's cool. So I upload the IIS International, no, ISS. Oh my god, did I just say IIS? <laughs> All right, International Space Station. They use Linux there, damn it, not Windows. <laughs> okay, moving along. Hello, you must be a CLI Magic user and a yoga lover. Mother effing unquoted attribute value validator. <laughs> so some kind of image from a, uh, a page on HTML validation rules or something. Yeah. Can I use this or this? Or does it need quotes? Oh, well, see, CLI users don't just have all the fun. It also happens in in web pages, too. Uh, all right. Don't think. I think that. Is that it? Ah, somebody's advertisement. Or maybe it wasn't even theirs. Hello. <laughs> Actually, let's do something. Let's have a little fun. See, GUI programs can't do it either. All right. So, copy this to image.jpg. Ah. And we'll go to Google Images lets you upload a image if you want and see if it can find it other places. Ah, so here it is. And, okay, here's the same image, but it's shrunk down. 
and it's on a uh, on a forum here. I'm not going to go in there just to give them a little bit of privacy, but you can see how how damning it can be <laughs> to to uh, do stuff like that. Okay, so I think what's left is this. A few things. Easy. I'm going to, okay, so this is a bzip file, and I think this is the one that's really big. And I am going to run bz less just to see if it's binary data or, or what inside. And I can get an idea, because, I don't know, I could be unzip it or whatever. Uh, so, oh, this seems, okay, so this is, this is somebody's myth TV log. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh my gosh. They sent me this huge log. That's just channel information, I guess. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I guess you can't just look at this and say, oh, they were watching Playboy or something. I mean, this is probably just, you know, channel schedule information. Uh, I'm sure they didn't watch all these shows. I mean, this is a lot of stuff and a lot of duplicate stuff. But there is some information about, uh, you know, their partitions and the name of their hosts and could potentially get some juicy data out of this. But that would take forever. Okay. Let's see what this is. Pearl. TTY ter. T I don't know how to pronounce that. This is a Twitter uh, program. I tried using it once. The problem I have with most microblogging clients is that they, they don't do everything I need. I need ones that support Linux, support Twitter and Identica, and work well, and can support multiple accounts. <laughs> and it's always like a big Venn diagram trying to find that uh, little niche of programs. And my requirements are always just inside, you know, they're just out of reach of being inside of all the circles. So... <laughs> okay, let me see what this is. Data. Hmm. Interesting. And try writing strings. Strings will take binary data and just give me the text. Well, not sure what that is. If file doesn't know what a, a file is, I don't know. You, you're kind of out of luck. I mean, you might be able to figure out what the data is uh, if there was some kind of special header, but most most file formats that you'd care about actually have those magic bits at the beginning, or magic bytes at the beginning, and you'd be able to figure it out um, just by running file. Okay, so let me grab out the ASCII ones, see what's left. Uh, several bits of data. Yeah. I think we're kind of out of luck on these. Oh, and here's a here's that MPEG three. I'll turn up the volume a little bit. Oh, That's cool. I'll leave that playing in the background and go in another way.
see what this very short file is. Okay, it's just... I can see exactly what it is by using hex dump. So it's just a new line. And... HTML document. Some flash. What's funny is that I mean I I thought I like that song, but I have no idea who it is, and I have no way of finding out really, <laughs> because I, I you know this obviously the it's MPEG3 info uh, headers, but it's not it couldn't be right, so it's just random data, and uh, since I don't know who uploaded it, I have no way of knowing what it is and I have no file name or anything and most likely that song wouldn't be identified by any of those online music identifiers they whenever I've tried them on obscure music you know not to say that this is bad music or anything I like it uh, but a lot of the music I listen to is is not top 40 stuff and it's more like this kind of stuff so <laughs> so whoever uploaded this it would just drop me a line let me know what it is, I'd be curious to know. Okay, so that's the files that were uploaded. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching that. Uh, next, I wanted to just go over a couple of other things. Um, first one is, uh, in the new Ubuntu 11.04, um, you probably noticed that they have this new hidden scroll bar thing. And that drives me nuts. I, I don't like it. Um, and if you ever want to get the old scroll bars back, uh, you can just run sudo apt get remove overlay scroll bar lib overlay scroll bar 0 0.1 0. I've already run this, so, but. I'll give you, you can just copy that down and run that. You'll need to log out and log back in after you run it so it, it can update. But that will bring your old scroll bars back. You know, the, the new hidden scroll bars, I'm sure the guy who, or girl who made that, thought that they were being really clever and everything. But, you know, I mean, sure, they take up a little bit of screen real estate, but they're kind of a necessity to a GUI. You know, when you hide the scroll bars, it makes it that much more of a pain to find them on the screen. And some people argue that you should just use your mouse wheel. Well, use your mouse, try using your mouse wheel when you have a list of like a thousand items to scroll through. You know, it's much faster if you have a scroll bar that you can quickly grab onto and scroll down. So I give that feature a big ah eh on the, you know, is this a good feature in a GUI? Um, somebody, obviously, you know, I don't want to hurt feelings or anything, but they need to go back to the drawing board on that one, and and they need to take that out of the next version of Ubuntu, so it's just so it's just gone. Um, try again, you know. 